Welcome to another Salesing instructional video. In these videos, we try to help you apply key concepts to improve your sailing. Today, we'll cover lift and drag. Knowing some of the theory behind lift and drag will help you prevent several common sail trim errors. You don't have to understand all the theory behind sail trim, but we think some knowledge will help you avoid common mistakes. Look at these insights from Stuart Walker's book on sail trim. In the introduction, Walker quotes an aerodynamics expert and sailor, say, saying that even experts can improve on sail trim. He also claims that the biggest room for improvement is to avoid drag caused by sail trim errors. Finally, he reminds us that a fast boat is a winning boat and that good sail trim will produce the biggest gains in speed. You may be wondering if it's too much effort to study sail trim. We believe that we can help you visualize the key concepts without using formulas or complex diagrams. We also believe that knowing the importance of these concepts will motivate you to pay more attention to sail trim. This video covers the basics of lift and drag. We'll use these concepts much more in the future as we go into more depth in on all aspects of sail trim. Let's start with some basic but very solid and technically accurate definitions of lift and drag. Lift is the upward force you feel if you place an object at an angle to the wind like placing your hand out the window of a moving car. If you place your hand at an angle, it will feel lifted. Drag is the force pushing the object along with the wind. Drag always accompanies lift. You can't have one without the other. If we add a boat to our drawing, we can see that when sailing upwind, lift pushes the boat forward with a little help from the centerboard and drag slows the boat down. Hopefully this is pretty to easy to understand and I apologize if I insulted anyone's intelligence. The detailed theory of lift is actually quite complex and many simplified descriptions get it wrong. We don't need to know all the details but you should know that there are actually two causes of lift in sails. First, just like our previous slide, simply placing an object in the wind deflects the wind and causes lift. That's why high-performance airplanes have very flat wings and why they can fly upside down. At low air speeds, the lift from deflection alone would not be enough to fly an airplane or sail a boat very well. So to enhance the lift, all sailboats have curved sails and most airplanes have curved wings or at least ways to add curvature. Curved sails create pressure differences between the front and the back of the sail. Let's see how. Moving air will flow smoothly over both sides of a gradual curve. The air flows a little faster along the back of the sail than the front. The reason is more complicated than most people think, but we don't need to go into that right now. The faster air on the back of the sail reduces the air pressure on the sail compared to the front, where the air is piling up and pushing on the sail. The difference in pressure between the front and the back of the sail causes lift. This greatly enhances the overall lift and is the reason we can go fast in a sailboat. The actual direction of the lift is toward the blue arrow, but a lot of that lift helps the boat go forward in the direction of the green arrow. The rest of the lift causes the boat to heel. We don't really need to understand this to be better sailors, but here's a bonus question. Why does the air fa flow faster over the back of the sail? Many simplified answers 
say that the air on the outside of the curve flows faster to cover a longer distance in the same time. Let's look at this video from Cambridge Un University to see what actually happens. This is, this is a slow motion video of air flowing across a wing. See how the air on the top of the sail gets ahead of the air on the bottom. So you can see that the simplified explanation is not correct. The correct explanation involves concepts of viscosity and circulation of flow around the sail. This is pretty complex stuff and not worth covering here. Now let's look at drag in more detail. We'll cover two major causes of drag. The first is simply that the sail is deflecting the wind and therefore is pushed back, just like your hand is pushed back when you stick it out the car window. This is called induced drag because it is induced by the deflection. The other major cause of drag is due to the separation of airflow as it passes over the sails. If air bends too much around the shape, it separates and stops fl sm flowing smoothly, forming what we call eddies or vortexes. You can see the eddies around the flat plate in this diagram. This, this creates drag since the swirling air pushes in all directions against the object, slowing it down. It is sometimes called separation drag. Now the edges of the sail, including the mast, boom, and leech, all have these abrupt effects on, this air, on the air and generate small eddies. There's nothing much we can do about these. However, if we sheet our sail in too much or bear off too far, or if the sail has too much curvature, eddies will form all over the leeward side of the sail. This is called stalling. Stalling destroys the lift and increases the drag. Watch this video of an airplane wing as the angle of attack is increased. Look how the flow starts to separate on top of the wing and look at the beginning of the vortexes forming at the trailing edge. Now the flow is pretty well separated and you can see some major vortexes behind the wing. Now let's talk about managing lift and drag while sailing. We obviously want to maximize lift to go fast. There are three ways to increase lift. These are all pretty simple. First, you can sail in more wind, since stronger wind obviously means more lift. Second, you can increase the angle of attack to deflect the wind more. You do this by sheeting in the sail more, pulling the traveler up, or bearing off away from the wind. Third, you can put more curve in the sail by choosing a fuller sail or loosening the sail controls. Of course, any time you increase lift, you also increase drag. So now we'll talk about managing drag. For now, let's focus on the effects of increasing the angle of tack. Let's look at some simplified graphs to show that lift and drag increase at different rates when you sheet in the sail or bear off. This is key to getting the most out of your sail. We'll use this graph to compare lift and drag. The bottom axis shows the angle of attack, which gets bigger as you move to the right. Think of this as sheeting in your sail or bearing off more and more. As we showed before, as you sheet in your sail or bear off, the lift increases up to a point 
and, that's, and then starts decreasing when the sail begins to stall. You get the most lift right before the stall point. This is when the air is flowing smoother, o smoothly over both sides of the sail. However, when we look at drag, we'll see that the most lift doesn't come with the least amount of drag. Here's the drag curve. Note how the drag increases slowly at first, then increases rapidly as you approach the stall point. So where's the sweet spot? To find this, we can look at the ratio of lift to drag. In non-mathematical terms, we're looking for the most lift for the least drag. Here's a graph of the ratio. You can see that the sweet spot is not at the maximum lift point. It's here. The sweet spot is where the sail is sheeted in enough to have air flowing smoothly on the leeward side of the sail, but not quite far enough that it is completely smooth on the windward side of the sail. This is not the greatest amount of lift, but is the most efficient balancing of lift and drag. Now let's look at the worst lift to drag ratios. The first is here, where you're luffing the sail. The drag is fairly low, but the lift is much lower, almost non-existent. Unless you're really overpowered, letting the sail luff is slow, and you should sail to prevent luffing, which is more detrimental than stalling your windward tail tails. The second low point is here, stalling the leeward side of the sail. We've already discussed this, but this graph shows again that it's really important to avoid stalling. In stalling, you have decreased the lift and increased the drag at the same time. This is bad, bad, bad. Now, let's look at some scenarios to test your understanding and cover some common sail trim errors. This picture shows a sail with telltales attached near the luff of the sail. Telltales help us visualize flow over the sails. Read the question and decide your answer. The answer is B. The leeward telltale is lifting, indicating the airflow is stalling. This should be obvious from our previous discussion, but it's a common sail trim error. If you are slow upwind, use the telltales on your sail until you get used to avoiding the stall. If you're stalling, let the sail out or head up into the wind slightly to decrease the angle of attack. Here's another upwind situation. What's your answer? The windward tail is lifting, indicating that the airflow on the windward side is stalling. Bearing off will correct this, but may not be necessary. Remember, this is the most efficient ratio of lift to drag, as long as the sail isn't luffing. However, if you need more lift because of waves, or needing to accelerate, you might want to sheet in or bear off. Here's our third situation, which addresses flattening your sails. What's your answer here? The answer is C. Both lift and drag are reduced with flatter sails. This is important because you can actually gain a little speed in flat water by trimming harder. That's what airplanes do. After taking off, they trim up for cruising speed by raising the flaps to flatten their wings. Here's another common sail trim issue. What do you think? Stalling periodically at the leech is not bad. Remember, there are normally small eddies at the edges of the sail, so fluttering telltales there are not abnormal. Many sailors actually under-trim their mainsail upwind. In light to medium air, your leech tails sh should be active, alternately appearing and disappearing behind the sail. This one sums up several concepts. 
When I was starting out in a cat-rigged boat, an experienced sailor told me to steer by the luft telltales and trim by the leech telltales. Is that good advice? If you are less experienced in trying to develop speed skills, this technique might help. Let's discuss why. As we've seen, steering to the luft telltales can help you maximize lift and minimize drag. Steering to these telltales puts your angle of attack in the sweet spots. Head up or bear off to get the telltales right. In boats with a jib, the skipper steers to the, sk to the jib telltales. With no jib, you can use the same thing, only using the luff telltales. Trimming to the leech telltales lets you power up the sail by increasing the curvature at the leech. Trim in until the upper leech telltale starts disappearing periodically. You can do this also by looking at the top batten and make it parallel to the boom. Let's end with a question about down, downwind sailing just to see how well you understand lift and drag. What do you think the answer is here? The answer is that drag is really pushing the boat forward in the direction of the wind. There is no smooth flow over the leeward side, so there's no appreciable lift due to the faster moving air on that side. We'll cover more about downwind sail trim later, and this is pretty obvious. But if the wind is light, the drag will not be enough to keep the boat moving fast. To go faster, you have to create more lift. You can use the upper leech to decide how far to head up. Head up until you see some flow using the leech telltales, or at least that the top batten is parallel to the boom and not hooked in. Let's summarize by repeating some of the common sail trim errors we've covered related to lift and drag. They're listed here and I won't read them again. Remember the Stuart Walker statements about how much room for improvement exists in sail trim. If you can get better at avoiding these errors, you'll make big gains in your boat speed. Thanks for watching. We hope you've learned something from this video. This was pretty basic stuff to get started, but we'll be using these concepts in future videos on all aspects of sail trim.